Everybody, it's Crystal from K Hip Hop Discussions. Hi, it's so nice to finally meet you guys after all this time. Some of you guys have been following me on Tumblr for four whole years. Some of you guys, not the whole four years, but a certain amount of time. But anyway, yeah. So you guys just been there watching me talk to myself slash rant about K Hip Hop. So thank you. Um, this is the first time that most of you guys will be seeing me, and very few of you guys have actually seen me before in a picture from CPR Lives Coming to You Live World Tour in LA. Um, I took a picture with him and I posted it, and I'm gonna like put it in here so you guys can see it. And, and um, yeah, like I didn't tag it, so it's actually really hard to find on my blog. So, but yeah, other than that, I just want to say that there's a, I have a lot of content planned and I just hope you guys support it and watch it like you guys always do. And um, yeah, also the next few videos, you'll probably see me wearing these headphones. Don't worry about them. It's just because they have a mic right here and um, yeah, like. My built-in computer mic is so sensitive and I didn't even realize that. Like, if somebody's making noise in the living room, you guys can hear it as if, like, they're sitting here talking. So, yeah, I just got these, use these earphones for the mic. <laughs> not Kid Millie, not playing Silky Boys on them. I will later, though. But anyway, um, thanks again. Um, like, subscribe. Hit the bell notification and all that stuff that, like, YouTubers tell you guys to do. And, um, yeah, see you in a little bit. Bye. Hi, guys. It's Crystal again. Um, now that we have the intro out of the way, um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the video, the actual content. Um, if you read the title, you guys know that this is Show Me the Money 8, Episode 1, Recap, Review, Opinions, Things of that Nature. If you see me looking down during the course of this video is because I have notes on my lap because the episodes of Show Me the Money are just so long. They're two hours long now. Like episode one was an hour and 41 minutes. Usually they're only, um, usually they're only about, no, 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 that's wrong. They used to be that during Show Me the Money's four five and like six i think six was the first season it was two hours but before season six if it wasn't season seven they used to be only one hour and so basically that makes the series so much longer it used to be 10 episodes so 10 hours but now it's um 10 episodes two hours so 20 hours all together but um, yeah, it's really long and I have more stuff to say about that, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. Um, starting with producers, um, you have two teams this season. And again, that's not a new thing. Um, that was actually the format of season one and season two. But I know that most international fans haven't seen those seasons because they're not subbed. Most of us started at like season three or season four. Because Bobby was on season three, Minnow season four, yeah. So it, Show Me the Money really popped off at season three. So most of you guys probably don't know that season one and season two already had this format. It's not new. They're just bringing it back. So there's two teams with four people each. And um, on team one, or BGNV, I think it's called. I hope I didn't get those letters mixed up. Um, but yeah, that team is Milik, BY, Mad Clown, and Verbal Gent. Then you have... Team two, which is um, 40 crew that has Boy Code, Swings, Gary Boy, and Kid Millie. So, overall, I'm fine with the producers this season. I don't really have any complaints, to be honest. I mean, 
I really wanted to see Gray because he was supposed to be on season seven, I think it was, but like um, he wasn't able to make it. So they switched him out. I don't remember who they switched him out with exactly, but yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, I'm fine with the producers. Um, the team dynamic is pretty cool. BGM is crazy. <laughs> They're super funny. But um, 40 crew is like, they're like weirdly more chill. Um, and it's just like Swings who's crazy. Swings was really, really crazy. Like he was doing the most. I, like I said, I saw the episode twice. And the first time I saw the episode, I was like, uh, he's getting on my nerves. And I like him, but he's getting on my nerves. So I can't even imagine how people who don't like him were like feeling about him on that episode. But yeah. Um, he was annoying. B.Y. and Millick, they were crackheads, but in a good way. They were funny. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I don't know which team I'm really rooting for to win at this point. It's too early in the game to tell. Um, because 40 crew, like, you know, I love Kid Millie. And then Boy Cold. He's so handsome. He's so handsome. So cute. But, um, yeah, and then BGMV crew is kind of like, I don't know, they're older, they, they seem more mature, especially like Verbal Jen, like, he's like that every season that he's on, um, yeah, Mad Clown is kind of quiet until you get him on stage, and then, yeah, so I don't really know who I'm looking for, it's probably 40 crew though, because you guys know I love Kid Millie. Indigo music. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it for like the two teams, pretty much. Um, judging styles. <laughs> judging styles. Um, I'm going to start with BY because I think that's the first person they actually showed in the episode. BY, his judging style was pretty normal. I didn't get anything like weird from him. He didn't annoy me. He wasn't irritating or none of that. But um, a lot of people were forgetting their lyrics when they got in front of him. I don't know why. Like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just scary in person. I've seen him live, but I never met him like face to face. So yeah, maybe he's just scary when you meet him face to face. As for Kid Millie, um, I'm so glad to see him. I love him so much. He's He was so sweet to everybody. Like, if I was a Show Me the Money contestant, I would have wanted Kid Millie to be my judge. Like, even when people were getting eliminated, you could see them like, oh, I'm sad. But then Millie would be like, oh, shake their hands. And they'd be like, like, all happy. And it's like, oh, how cute. Um, I'm not going to lie, though. Like, um, that Kid Millie clip, because he was actually on Show Me the Money 4. And he got eliminated by um, Jinu from Jinu Shan. And if you guys saw that season, you know that Jinu was like, he was like harsh, like probably the most harsh judge ever. Cause like he would just walk up to you and if he sucks, like he just walk away, not say nothing, just leave. So that's pretty much what he did to Kid Millie during his audition in Show Me Money 4. And basically I think that's part of the reason why Millie was like so nice to the like um the contestants because he remember like how that feels and like how nerve-wracking it is and like my respect for him grew after seeing that um one thing he said when somebody was forgetting their lyrics was like the first person and they got flustered and he's like um chonchoni haseo which basically means um chonchoni haseo oh um go slow please like slow down um, you don't have to, like, rush, like, yeah, like, chill, basically. But, like, he's saying it, the sale form is, like, the highest form of, like, the most respect you can give someone when you're speaking in Korean. So, like, I don't know, that proves that, like, he doesn't think he's better than anybody. He's just kind of like, you know, like, I respect you guys. You guys respect me. Like, oh. So, yeah, like, I've heard a lot of good things about Kid Millie, like, in Korea from people who met him. And so, like, that's not just, like, an act that he puts on for TV. That's who he is. So, 
Can really hesitate about discussion, the seal of approval. Yay. Malik. I don't have much to say about him, but like he was scary. <laughs> I would have been scared if he was my judge on Show Me the Money. Cause like those laser eyes, like everybody would get scared. And his face is just like so serious and like Cole's like. So like, I don't know, people just get scared and his eyes are intense. And a lot of people forgot their lyrics and got scared. So yeah, that's really the only thing that really stood out about Millet. He wasn't mean particularly. Like it was just like, that's his face. Gary boy. He wasn't mean or anything. He was cool. But, um, yeah, he was, he was cute. He was dancing, like, or he was swinging the, like, chain over his shoulder, like, and, um, I don't know, that was funny. But, um, he seemed like he was, like, not giving to the chain to really good rappers. But then he'd go and he'd give a chain to someone who, like, can barely rap. So I was like, what's going on? I don't understand. Um, huh? Um, yeah. I don't know what to say about that. Like, if there's someone on here and you're less like, how did they get on? It was probably Millie who passed. No, 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 my bad. It was probably Gary Boy or Millie who passed them. Because Millie was passing from questionable people too. But I'll get that back to that during the contestants part of the video um anyway now we're gonna move on to mad clown and i'm gonna try to speak up because like i'm talking a lot and i'm trying to like get to the point but i'm long-winded so anyway i'm doing it again okay so mad clown um he failed song jae-hoon who was like my boy why would you fail him he's and he's really good so i was kind of like um why and he made him do it like three times like like are you gonna pass him are you gonna fail him like what like, he failed him unfortunately but um yeah one thing i will say about mad clown is like at least he gave people like second tries and stuff because mad clown himself forgets a lot of lyrics i think he like feels um he feels like he relates to the contestants that like mess up so i think that's why he does that um, as for verbal gen, there was nothing particular, particularly special about his judging. Um, he was really nice. And his hair was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he was cute. He was nice. He was verbal gen. Like, he's just like this. If you guys haven't seen Show Me The Money or where he was a judge, like, he's just like this. Um, boy cold, cute, handsome. I've actually never seen boy cold before in person, so this was like a shock to me that he was so handsome. Like, cause you would think like you'd see all these people like talking about him and posting pictures, but like I've never seen him before, so that was interesting. Um, also, I never really listened to his music. I found out like later in the episode where like they showed um by and C Jam song Puzzle. And actually, he produced that. So that's a good song. That's pretty much the only song I can recall that I've heard by him, produced by him. Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to, um, I'm actually looking forward to like seeing what he's gonna bring to the show. He was one of the people who passed like a lot of the good people. So I expect his songs to be really good. I'm, at the time of filming this, like his songs, have, songs have from Show Me the Money eight have already came out because it's like episode six, but I'm like really behind. Sorry. So yeah, songs have already come out, but I haven't listened to them yet. So I'll try to over the weeks like get faster. But anyway, that's the point. Um, yeah. Um, oh, another a funny thing that he did was like the Show Me the Money change when he first like saw them. He was like, um, "Oh, is this real gold?" Like. I don't think it is because like that would be too expensive just to give like these chains away like hundreds of chains away to people dozens to people and like they're real gold but like they never answered him so i'm yeah i'm gonna assume they're fake um yeah 
So anyway, now to Swings, who was like the most interesting person to talk about. Swings, let's talk about it. He was annoying. Sorry. I know Swings is on YouTube too, so if you see this, boy, you was annoying. I love you. But you were annoying on episode one, period. Um, the way he was treating the contestants, like, what, even on the first time when I saw the episode, it was at a watch party, and I heard one of the other girls in the room, she's like, I hate when judges act like that. Like, everybody's already nervous. They're already, like, scared. So why do you have to do all that? Why do you got to act like that? And I was like, you know what? You're right. I agree with that. And, um, yeah, I really do. Um, he just should have just been regular. There was no need to be cold or rude or any of that. Like, could at least just, like, shook their hand and then, like, like, yeah, like, other people say, like, come something or, like, whatever they say. I don't remember exactly what they say when they fail someone, but, yeah. He could have just been regular. That was doing the most. And, yeah, um, Swings, it's all I really had to say about him. Oh, I will say, I'll just put this in right now. And I'll talk about it more later in the contestants part. But I will say I'm glad he didn't pass um, no option. Sean? If, I don't really know how to pronounce that name of that contestant. But he knew the contestant because he was from Show Me the Money too. And um, I guess Swings, he forgot his lyrics. That's what happened. And then Swings, like, next him. Any other person who already knew something, usually they pass them even if they suck. So, like, I will say I'll give that to him. Like, I respect that. Like, no no um, connections. Like, either you're good or you're not. And if you're not, goodbye. Um, so I respect that. So now, here we go. On to the contestants, which is probably the part that people probably want to hear most about. Um, yeah. The contestant pool this season, I'm not feeling it. I'll be honest straight up. Um, I do not feel like there was a lot of good contestants. Like even when I was watching Show Me the Money, um, Show Me the Money Eight Episode Two, because I've already seen it, I've seen it live. Even when I was watching that, I was like, uh, I'm not really feeling these contestants this season. Like I don't know what's going on. Um, there's really like only a handful of people who are really interesting. But I'll yeah. Anyway, that's my point. Because now I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm on season two. I mean, I don't know. Episode two, but like, yeah. Anyway, that's the contestants right now on episode one. We're going to start with Song Jae-hoon. Um, if you guys have heard about this person before, he is actually on High School Rapper season two, I believe. Yeah. And um, he's a former big hit trainee. Big, big hit entertainment for... The few people who probably don't know is the company that houses the K-pop group BTS, who's super popular in America right now. They're super popular in Korea. They're everywhere. Go away. No, I'm just kidding. Please stay. Boys with love. I love you. But, like, go away a little bit. Anyway, uh, yeah, he was a former big hit trainee, and he's just really, really good. But he just does not have luck with these survival shows. Um... Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, Mad Clown um, eliminated him after having him um, try his rap three different times. Um, and I think he's really good. But apparently these survival shows just don't. Um, he got eliminated the first episode on High School Rapper 2. And he got eliminated the first episode on Show Me the Money 8. And it's like... The last time I've seen a contestant like him, it was one from Show Me the Money 4 and 5. And one was like extreme, well, I won't say extremely, but he was really popular. He ended up getting signed to YG Entertainment and just like, um, yeah, doing his thing. But um, I don't know, because I feel like Jaehoon has all the things that one had. Like, he has the looks, he has the skill, he has the performance, everything. But these survival shows are just not doing anything for him. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, and um, you guys probably don't know who he really is. 
and who I'm talking about, but I'm going to actually insert pictures and two pictures so you guys can like see who I'm talking about. Next up is Takua. Gary Boy passed him, of course, and um, he should have failed. I'm sorry. Like, to all the Takua fans out there, I don't know. Like, I feel like anybody else would have, like, failed him. But, yeah. I don't really have much else to say about him at this moment. But, yeah. I'm not feeling him. Maybe I'll start feeling him later on during the season. But, um, yeah. That's how I feel about him. Um... There's a lot of children, a lot of children, 2005, 2006, and I'm just like, what am I doing with my life? Like, wow, they're so good. Um, Joel Uchan, Mr. VVIP. Um, VVIP, VVIP. Wow, your impact, like, wow, he inspired DR. Um, Unso, I'm probably pronouncing his name so terrible. I'm sorry, guys. Whatever. Um, he's inspired a lot of kids to come on the show, and yeah, go ahead, Wu Chang, little homie. Um, there was a kid who was like about to press boat boy code basically, cause like I guess when he started rapping, like boy code was like. Like, he did that kind of, like, expression. And, like, the kids stopped rapping, like, um, excuse me? And Boy Cold was like, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Like, the kid was like, don't make faces during my performance. Like, who are you? He's Boy Cold. That's who he is. But still, call him out. Tell him. Um, <laughs> and then Che Nso, who I was talking about earlier, um, he was previously eliminated by D Arc on Show Me the Money Seven. Um, he had the one versus one versus one with Owen, D Arc, and himself, and he was eliminated during that one. So he came on here again, and it's like he got eliminated, and I'm just like, how? Um, Gary Boy did this. So when you guys didn't know what I was talking about when I said he passed, he failed good people, but passed people who were, eh, this is what I'm talking about. Like, nobody would fail this kid. Like, he's good. He's really good. And he's like 15, 16, might even be younger. So I don't know what was going on there. Um, Gary Boy was tripping. I'm turning the page, so that's the noise you guys hear. Um, then another really young dude, we had... I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but I think it's Minu. Um, anyway, he's from Frank Crew. He's 17 years old. Oh my god. I've heard of this kid before. Like he was at Buzzer Beat 2019 a couple months back. Well, not even a couple, like last month. And I looked him up and I heard one of his songs and it was like, okay, he's good. But I didn't know that Frank Crew was this young. But yeah, he's he's good, and I'm definitely he kid Millie passed him, and I'm definitely looking to see more of him, cause um, yeah, he was really good. Um, now we have Jang Yu, Jang Yu, um, Verbal Jin passed him, and I just want to say that I'm so glad that Verbal Jin actually like listened to him instead of like passing him. Well, like, failing him. Yeah, failing him, not passing him. Failing him, like, five seconds in. Because when I was hearing him, I was like, huh? What is this? Oh, I'm not feeling it. It's kind of embarrassing, kind of cringy. But as he kept going, like, I was like, oh, no. Like, this is actually good. Like, what? He's a perfect mixture of, like, um, skill. He can actually rap. And again, I've seen episode two, so, like, I've seen more of him, so like, yeah, he can actually rap, and so he's a, he's also good at um, having an interesting style, you know, he's kind of got that little sing-song thing going on there, too, 
and people like that nowadays. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him as well. Thank you, Verbal Gent. Thank you. Now we get to Jiho Givenchy. Kid Millie. Why? Just why? I'll be nice. He, when he was interacting with like fans and stuff at uh, on the show, um, he seemed like he was a pretty cool dude, pretty nice. And he seemed like he was like actually more like normal and not so extra when he's like really interacting with people like off camera or whatever. So I'll give him that. But on camera, he was doing so much. He was like too extra. Like he was more extra than swings and he had a way less screen time than swings. Like how do you out extra swing? He's this extra God. Like he's, that's who he is. Like So he's also just not good at rapping. Like I don't know how or why Millie passed him. Like I don't know what Millie was thinking. Like he just wasn't. He was just blanked for a second i don't know um so anything we see jiho jivan she do for the rest of the season we're not gonna blame it on jiho because that's just we're gonna blame it on millie because like that's his man if you ever if you're ever thinking whose man is this it's millie's man come at millie because that's his problem that's his fault so um, then there was a kid named Yi Byung-un. Yi Byung, Byung Ung. There we go. And I think I may have met this kid before. Well, he's not a kid. Like, he's a grown-up. But I'm saying kid because, like, that's just how I talk. I think I've met this man before. Or it's just somebody who has a similar name to him. I think I met him, like, outside of the club or something in Hongdae. But yeah, I'm not 100%. It could have just been someone with the same name. He talked about going on Show Me the Money, but he told me he was a producer. Like he makes like songs. You know how they have like those parts where like they play songs for like the 1v1 battle? Like, yeah, like I guess they have producers who make those songs who aren't like the producers on the show. You know what I mean? So anyway, I think I met that guy, but I'm not 100% sure. If I did meet him, he's really nice. And I support him, and I hope he does really well because he was super nice outside the club. We love you. Thank you. Like, thanks for coming to talk to us out of nowhere. We we're just two random girls outside of the club at like 5 a.m. And you talked to us, and you were so nice. Thank you. I hope you do well. But anyway, if he wasn't, um, I'm always getting sidetracked. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, um, he was really good, and. He seems like he knows his gangster rap. Like he was like dropping some lines. One, two, three into the flow. Like he was out here. I was like, okay, okay. So boy cold passed him, of course. My boy boy cold. Hey boy, it's cold. Or is it big boy? It's cold. Anyway. Um, yeah, okay. So next we have Le Libido, but it's like Lee. Anyway. Um he kind of reminds me of like a mixture of like one and Juno flow. If you like smush them together, you would get the veto. Like that's what he looks like. His rap style is nothing like either one of them, but like that's just how he looks. So um, he raps pretty good, pretty well. I'm looking forward to seeing him more. And um, good job, Gary boy. Like you, you pick someone good. Like, I guess I can forgive the other stuff, okay? I guess. Um, then we have, we the guy pops up and he's wearing like a mask and like, everybody's like, who is this? Well, that's Cox Billy. Um, swings past him. He has really nice hair. Um, that was my first impression of him. He's another one of those, like, um, Jung Yoo who, like, warms up as you, like, hear him rap. Because I was like, at first I was like, eh. 
But then I like heard him more and I'm like, okay, he's good. And Swings passed him. Swings is a good judge of talent. I mean, he has Indigo, JM, Weed to Plug. Like, he knows talent. He just does. Um, so, yeah. And then um, now, finally, what I talked a little bit about earlier. Um, Nok Opshan? Nok Opshan? I tried my best. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was the guy from Show Me the Money 2 who Swings knows and Mad Clown knows as well. And um, like I was saying, like I really respect Swings because he he messed up and Swings was like, nope, like no second chances, nothing. Like I respect that because if that was another judge, that person would have probably got through and no, like he messed up. Everybody else is getting failed for messing up this season and that's been like a thing for the like ever since show me the money five because it was so bad on show me the money five everybody was forgetting their lyrics until like episode like five six seven so it was like terrible anyway um yeah people are really strict about messing up your lyrics so yeah like he kind of had to fill him so i'm glad he actually did instead of like keeping him around which is sad though because like that guy seemed like he was actually a good rapper, but everybody messes up eventually. It's whatever. Then we have Swervy. And she was spelled by Gary Boy, which is a surprise. But um, she definitely shouldn't have passed. She should have failed. Um, I agree with Gary Boy 100% on that one. She should have failed. Um, I don't think it had, people were speculating that, oh, Gary Boy failed Swervy because um, Swervy has problems or beef with Jackie Y. And we all know that Gary Boy is tight with Jackie Y. So it was like, oh, like, I'm going to be petty and fail you regardless of how good you are because I don't like you because Jackie doesn't. So you're failed. I don't think that was it, was what it was. Like she just wasn't good. She did not do good in that audition. Period. That's what it is. So moving on, you have Yunwe from um, Weeda Plug Records. Is it records or is it just WBP? I don't know. Whatever. Um, Yunwe. She was passed by Milik, and she should have been failed. Sorry. I'm just being honest. And I like, I like Yunwe. I'm not a huge fan, but I like her somewhat. Um, but that's all I have to say, like, um, at this point. Because, again, I've seen other episodes and other clips from other episodes. So, at this point, I'm just going to leave it at that. She should have failed. But we'll talk more about it later. And, yeah. Now, Punchinello... He was passed by BY. He was really good. Duh. He obviously, like, when I said earlier, there's only a few, like, contestants that I really, like, are interesting. Like, he's one of them. So he was really good. I don't really like the bottle look on him, but, like, so what? Who cares? That's none of my business. That's irrelevant. Um, yeah, so that's that. Then there was, like, a list of people who, like, looked like other people. That was interesting. So somebody looks like quiet, ready. Um, By and Gary Boy, all of them got failed. So I feel like that was a waste. Like they should have been, um, they should have been cut out, kind of. Like that was kind of a waste. Like I feel like I'll get, I'll get more into it later. But two hours is too long. It's too long. Um. Then you have So Donghyun, aka Big Naughty, and that's like the kid, the singing kid with the hat. He was wearing yellow. Like, you guys know who he is because he's going to make it far. Spoiler alert, I guess. Like, anybody with a brain can probably see that he's going to make it far, so I don't think that's really a spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, um, he was really good. Verbal Jump passed him. He's one of my favorite contestants, and he will probably continue to be one of my favorite contestants. And I'll probably listen to him after the show is over 
and for years to come because like he's just really good. He's another contestant that I really like. He has skill and style, best thing ever. So enough about that for the moment. Um, Woo Jin Young, um, I was like, why is this kid giving so much TV time if Mad Clown just failed him? But then I looked him up and it's like, oh, he's from Produce 101. He was, um, he won first place on Mix 9 YG survival show. First place, like that's a feat. So, um, yeah, that's why he was getting so much screen time. And there's actually a revival round on episode one. I know some of you guys haven't actually seen the episode yet. So, um, you're just using this to like, cause you don't want to watch it. You just want to hear somebody talk about it. Like, I feel you, I feel you on that. Um, yeah. So he actually gets passed in the revival. Wait, does he get passed? I'm not sure. I don't remember. We'll talk about that later, but yeah. So I feel like he probably does make it through on the revival round, but we'll have to see. Anyway, um, EK obviously gets passed. Like, I don't even want to spend time talking about EK because, like, no crap. Like, duh. He got passed by Vertible Gent. He's great. Awesome. But, okay, one thing I will say, um, he was kind of lackluster from what I remember. Like, I don't know. There was just something off about him. I didn't think he was that great. So I have to keep an eye on him and see what's going on this season because that's not the EK I remember. But that's, it's episode one. Um, Young B, B Y passed him, of course. Young B looks like a big baby. He's so cute. Has a baby face. I love him. I met him. I saw him like a million times in home day when I was in Korea. I love him. Um, I knew he was gonna pass, like, duh, obviously, um, like, especially looking at the contin the other contestants, like, yeah, he's probably gonna win this season, he probably is gonna win, um, and that's just the truth, um, yeah, there's, like, maybe, like, six people this season, probably less than that, probably, like, four, in, like, I'm pretty sure, like, one of those four people are, like, guaranteed to win. It's kind of like, um, you know, like, uh, Black Knight, show me the funny money, for, show me the money for, like, um, Song Min is the winner anyway. Like, yeah, like, these, one of these four people is probably going to win. Because, like, that's how the competition is set up. Like, there's some people who are, like, extremely better than the others. Like, it's bad. Um, yeah, anyway. I'm almost done, guys. I know it's been like 30 minutes. I wasn't trying to make this video that long, but if you guys like it, who knows? Okay, so now we're, oh, we're at the end of the episode now. Okay, good. So I'm not that bad on time. So there was a revival round that they will show more of like next week. Well, not next week, but next episode, episode two. Um, knock up Sean, knock up Sean, <sighs> that name, um, anyway, like, he gets spelled again by BY this time, so, like, um, yeah, that just is what it is, um, nothing special, and then it was kind of just, like, basically the end of the episode, um, yeah, so, here's my opinions overall, of the whole season based on well not the whole season but just based on episode one um the main thing there needs to be a balance with the contestants there has to be it's like either i feel like some people like Yuri boy or millie like they don't want to hear like old school rap and i understand that they want to like see more like um stylish people who have a little bit of originality and a little bit of um, uniqueness to them and I understand that but they still have to be able to rap like they're rappers at the end of the day like that's their job they're not just like fashionistas or something who can just like be stylish like and that's it 
they're not models where like you, your swag and your aura, your charm can just carry you. Like, no, like you have to be able to rap. You're a rapper. So um, like there has to be a better balance between like people who can kind of do both. Please understand, I get it. It's 2019. Most people don't want to hear people still rapping like African Bimbada or whoever from way back then. I get it. But there has to be balance. They have to be able to do something new and still rap. Period. Um, and I feel like there's three people in particular that we've seen on this episode. I'll get more into it on other episodes. But um, there's three people in particular on this episode, and that's Jang Yu, Big Naughty, and Cox Billy, who are the perfect examples of like, um, um, whatever I just said, um, style as well as rap skills. So that's why I'm really looking forward to seeing more of them because they have the best of both worlds. Most rappers either have one or the other. But they have both, so they're going to be really interesting to watch. Um, and also, just about the show, Show Me the Money in general, regardless of season, two hours is too long. Like, I think during Show Me the Money 5 or 6, the episodes were like just 90 minutes straight up. But episode one was an hour and 41 minutes. But they, like when you watch it on TV, because I did and I just watched it um, on kshow123.net. Um, when you watch it on TV, there's actual commercials. So it is like a full two hours. It's not one hour, 41 minutes. So, um, but yeah, so... It's too much because I feel like there was just like a lot of filler stuff, like with the stuff with um, the lookalikes, for example, like that could have been cut. That was it didn't add anything to the episode. And then there was like times when like you would see um, like it would cut back and forth from contestants to producers to them talking, which is like normal. But after a while, it got like a little bit too much. Like I don't really need to see the producers like just doing like random stuff you know it's cool a couple times but like when you start using it as filler that's when you know the episode is too long um i feel like i'm not seeing more stuff like i'm just saying more filler like i want to see like probably like more contestants rather than like filler if it's going to be two hours you know i don't feel like i've seen like from episode one of like show me eight or like episode one of show me four or like five. I don't feel like I see more contestants. Just a lot of feelings, too much. So, yeah. I have a lot of filler too, so I get it. A lot of filler. I talk a lot. Sorry guys, 41 minutes now. 41 minutes looking at me like ranting and raving about K-hip hop, but like that's what y'all love me for. If you guys already follow me on Tumblr, you guys know this is how I am. You guys know. So, um, yeah, um, that's my overall opinion on episode one of Show Me The Money 8. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Please leave comments, um, like, subscribe, share if you want. Um, if you do subscribe to me, which I'll love you forever if you do, um, please hit the notification bell. Yeah, so that's about it. Thanks, guys. It was so fun hanging out with you. For I want to get to my baby. I want to know that I'm always out for you.